Florida State got beat at home by Jacksonville State on a last-second Hail Mary pass. They were up 17-7 to with five minutes left in the game, Chris. Like, I, I don't understand. I literally turned on my television, walked in the door from Tuscaloosa yesterday just in time to see that. And, and I swear to you, I did not know how to react. Did you see the cheerleaders that were walking when when they realized that this kid had actually scored a touchdown on the last play of the game? Yeah, I saw them. I, yeah, and that's fine. This is why I don't want to go ever go to a game, by the way, is is because I'm afraid I'm just going to become a meme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, This I one really broke my heart. This one really hurt me a lot. And, and, and let me tell you what. This is Mackenzie Milton's first loss as a starting quarterback. Yes. In 26 games now. Yeah. That yeah. hurt me. That hurt me bad because you know how much I was pulling for him to get the starting job. Um, Jacksonville State looked god-awful last week. God-awful. Yeah. How, 31 how, to nothing loss to UAB. How this happened, <clears throat> I can't explain. This is Florida State coming off, and, and, and it's not that it was so much a shortened week or anything like that. They still should have handled this game. That's right. They, they did not prepare for this game, and we see this time and time again. When you're coming off All of the a big-time emotional spot, right, against Notre Dame, it, everybody's back, you're, it, the momentum with the program is going well, and – and it's like the players don't feel like they had. They feel like they've arrived, even if they lost the game to Notre Dame, and they don't prepare right. They don't prepare all week long, and and it comes down to a couple of plays here and there. Uh, looking at the advanced stats here, at points per opportunity. That is, you know, drives that got inside the the forty yard line. Florida State only scored ten points on four drives inside the forty. Ten points. So. It, that's not good. At Jacksonville State, on the other hand, four drives inside the 40, they scored 14 points. That's 2.5 to 3.5 as far as points per opportunity. The the average... Man, I'm just... I'm looking at, like, stuff rate and everything else, and this was, like, an even ball game. Like, this was even. I just... I, I don't know how that happens if you're Florida State. The predicted points added in the fourth quarter. Jacksonville State, of course, came back, scored two touchdowns late in the fourth quarter, and, and that sealed the deal. Like, that last play was an abomination. And Mike Norvell did come out and say, like, this is inexcusable. Yeah. But he his tweet last night was, let me let me pull it up. I know I retweeted it. But what he said in the postgame press conference was, ran a two-deep man under, tried to get pressure on the quarterback. They still had one timeout, so we didn't go to immediate prevent. There were six seconds left. What do you mean you didn't go? Like, keep everything in front of you. But <laughs> well, hang on now. I, it, it's There's a part of me that I think it's, I think you messed this up. Okay. Coaching messed this up, no doubt. Trying to explain a mistake is always worse than making the mistake. Yes. So, so that, that doesn't go well either. Here's the problem. Everybody in the world, when they go into prevent defense and it messes up and it gets gashed, uh, all, all gets killed. Always. Okay. The the fact that he didn't go into prevent defense now. What bothers me is is when you're not in prevent, you're also you're still not pass rushing. And that's what frustrates people. Put all your DBs back to where nobody gets behind them. But get some kind of pressure. Don't rush one, two, or three guys. Still rush four guys. Because when a quarterback has all day, they can sometimes make something happen. But if you put their ass on the ground, then they can't make anything happen. Yes. Yes. I, I just don't I don't get it. Uh, by the way, total EPA in the game, Florida State negative 12.8, Jacksonville State 1.29. Like, just, it's just a piss poor football game. Yes. Yes. It wasn't like it was even a, a big you know turnover fest or something. Florida State had one nope. turnover. Like that was it. I, I just I don't understand how this happens. I it, it this is this feels like rock bottom for Florida State. Like it, it felt like that. Is Mike Norvell the guy to get him out of the bottom? I want to believe so, but well, dude, hang on now. How uh, long have I wanted to believe Justin Fuente was the guy? Now maybe he is. Maybe year six is the is the year. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm I'm with you. I'm saying I, I want to believe it. I don't know. I don't know if you cannot prepare your guys for Jacksonville State, like. The this only good rough. thing that comes from this for guys like us who live in the Memphis area is is maybe people will quit hiring Memphis coaches. <laughs> it's entirely possible. No matter how good they are, 
we just not gonna hire him anymore. Oh my god! Yeah, no, I, may, maybe that's what it is, but I, I, I don't have high hopes. My under five and a half for Florida State this year is looking a little bit better right now. So oh, it's a lock now. I, I do. I, feel, think, I think it's I a do feel an absolute lock. Oh, what a what is that? All that momentum just gone. They'll they'll beat Miami, and that'll be it. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.